my name's Eric with Brunswick Firearms Reviews. Today we're going to be talking about the FN PS90 rifle. So this is how it comes, cardboard box. It's got the flap on the front, just flips up and open. Uh, and there she is. This is how she comes. So let's go ahead and get her out. This is a really unique firearm. It's a little different than your traditional rifles as far as loading it, the magazine, um, just all the way around. They are phenomenal firearms. Love these guys. Um, like I said, though, they are unique. Right off the bat, I see uh, that it is completely ambidextrous. This firearm, you can be right-handed or left-handed. Um, you can switch the safety, which is right here with, the, with, the, with your finger, on either side, right here. You can switch safety to fire. Um, the magazine loads on top, so it comes off on top. The charging handle, there's, which is here on the side, and it's on both sides. Again, completely ambidextrous. You can be left-handed or right-handed. Makes it a sweet, sweet gun. Um, it ejects the shells out the bottom when you fire. So, you know, if you're right-handed, you ain't worried about flying across your face or, or vice versa. Um, so, overall, this firearm is completely ambidextrous, uh, which makes it very awesome. Um, so, the finish here is actually pretty good. It can, it does seem like it could be a little slick if your hands were sweaty or whatever, but um, it, there is a little bit of texture on it. However, the thumb hole, this is a, a fixed pull pup stock basically with a thumb hole. Uh, so, you know, that prevents that slipping and also helps you hold it tighter to be, you know, to hold your, your, your gun in line there. Um, one unique items on this particular model, um, you can see that it is optic ready. Now, I'm, I can show you on the camera, but I, I'm pretty sure you're not going to be able to see it, but I'm going to try to show you anyways. There are sights within this uh, mount right here, this Picatinny rail. I don't know if you can see it. I'm going to see if we can get it in there, but there is a little tiny hole right here. I don't know if you can see it on the camera or not, but it's right here. When I look through that hole... You can actually see through that Picatinny rail, and on the front side, I don't know if you can see it, try to get it angled so you can see it, uh, there is a sight in there. You can see it a little bit down in there. So making this rail really unique, I mean, that is awesome. So if you have a red dot on top um, or something and, and it malfunctions, battery runs low or whatever, you do have this peephole, so you do have uh, standard sights through there. Uh, but by looking through there, I mean, it is pretty awesome. Um, there are some tools that come with it, and I'll show you those here in a minute. Um, just want to finish up a few details before we do that. Um, this does have a 16-inch barrel, uh, making it a rifle. The, the firearms, these firearms weigh roughly, I think they're like six and a quarter pounds. It might be just a smidge more. But... Most of the weight is in the rear end uh, because everything's recessed backwards in, in the buttstock here, making this firearm a lot shorter. You know, like I said, this is a fixed bullpup thumb hole stock, so that's why. Um, but yeah, overall, I mean, this thing is uh, it's a pretty, pretty nice gun here. So let's see what comes with it. The magazine should be right here. Uh, there is a lock here, and I'll show you how to use that in a minute. Right now, I'm going to set that to the side. Um, also, I will be talking about the trigger pull on this firearm, as I do in the previous videos. And I do have the scale here, so we can get the trigger pull weight as well. So we'll be checking that, um, the reset, the pull length, the reset, and the weight all at once. Uh, so you can see it. Uh, here's the magazine. Uh, this particular one says it's a 50 rounder. Uh, looks like it's stopped though. So this is, so they must use, um, basically it looks like they put a stop in here. Uh, you can, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but there's a 50 right here, 30, 25, but you can see inside of there, this is clear. There is a plate inside making this a 30 round magazine. So it looks like 
Um, without that stop in there, yeah, you can see it in there. Um, they basically use the same housing and then they would change where this stop is. If it's 25 round, 30 round, 50 round, or 10 round, because obviously some states you can only have 10 rounds uh, magazine. So um, kind of neat. But um, this thing loads up kind of weird. It is not normal, um, your standard everyday magazines. So the way this would load, the magazine actually loads in from the top, not the bottom. The bottom is where the shells would eject when you fire the gun. So you're, you're actually going to slide the magazine just like that. Now right here, let me pull it back out so you can see it. Right here is, is a little slide, left-handed or right-handed. This would pull back, allowing this round area of the magazine to drop into place. So you're going to slide the magazine in, you're going to pull the, that lever back, and it's going to pop into place just like that. So there's your magazine sitting right on top. Your shells, are, your, your rounds are in here. It's kind of neat, and I'll show you how loading it, but when you load it in there, um, you push your, your bullets in, will be facing this way, and as you load them, they'll turn as they load into the magazine. And then, of course, they'll unwind back out when they come out when you fire, and they'll drop out the bottom here. So it's really unique. It's not, that's not, you know, your everyday bull pups or, or stuff like that. A lot of your bull pups will actually load from the bottom with a magazine. So that's pretty neat. So I'm going to take that back out. Um, yeah, let's go ahead. I'm going to load up this magazine and see it. By the way, I did tell you guys that the barrel is a 16 inch barrel. It, the twist in it is a 1.9. So it's a 1.9 twist, not bad, uh, pretty good there. The overall length, I would say this thing is a little over 26 inches, maybe 27 inches. Um, and uh, the receiver is aluminum in these guys, so just so you know. Uh, and the barrel, the barrel is actually chrome lined inside of this uh, barrel. So it is a hammer forged barrel, but it's got a chrome lining inside of it. Uh, but anyways, let me show you about this magazine because it is uh, it is very different. So I've got some, uh, as you know in our previous videos, I love to use the snap caps when I'm dry firing my firearms to protect the uh, firing pin and all the little mechanisms in there. Um, so here's the magazine you can see the bottom here this round part so it's going to be hard to see on the camera but there's the slot where your uh round is and these are five seven okay they're five seven by 28 rounds is what the fn is here uh, in this slot right here it's a little wider towards the bottom of it than it is the top portion so basically you could i don't know if you can see it but right about here where my finger is right there your butt of your bullet's gonna go in here. Turn it up this way. Oop, let me grab another one. And you're basically gonna press it just like that. So it's kind of like halfway in. You'll see it in person when you get it. Uh, but you're gonna press it in and then slide it upwards, upwards that way, okay? So now you can see that the round is loaded in there. Your next one's gonna go the same way. Now, when I press down on this one, that first one's gonna start turning because eventually it's facing this way and eventually they're gonna turn and they're gonna be just like any other magazine, just stacked up just like this. So when they come back up, they'll rotate back out so they can be chambered into the firearm. So let's take this one. So we're gonna put it here and try to do it on camera. It's gonna be a little hard because I'm doing it backwards this way. Um, we're going to press down on that bullet one way or another. Let's see. It's a little hard to do it on the camera. So it presses in and that one will slide right up. Um, so the other one is already, let's see if it's kicked sideways yet. Let's see if we can get it in the light. So yes. So that first one, when we pop this shell in this, this round, when it pressed the other one down, it's turned it already. So it's already turning up. So we're going to put the other one again. We're going to put it right on top. So you can see the shell right here. We're going to go right on top of that one. I'm going to lay it down here. And we're going to press down and up. 
So it is a little hard to load uh, one by one like that. Um, it, it is really stiff, but I, I know you can't see it probably in the camera, but on the side, I can see the butt of the bullet. I don't think you can see it on there. Uh, so again, as we're putting the bullets in this way, it's pushing the bottom one, it's rotating it and putting it flat in. I'm gonna go ahead and put this last one in. I had five and I dropped one on the floor, so now I got four. Uh, so again, these are snap caps, spring loaded in the center, so when you fire it, um, the spring loaded in the center, the mechanism in that snap cap will absorb all of that pressure and that firing pin coming in uh, to protect your um, firing pin and all that stuff. So we have four rounds in here. Now, what I want to do is go in and we're going to see what that trigger pull length is of this firearm. And then we're going to uh, see what the reset position is, if it's long, short, whatever. And then we'll, we'll put the gauge on it and see what the weight is of this trigger pull. So um, let's go ahead and, and load this magazine uh, into the firearm here. I've got four rounds in it. So it's our snap cap, so they're, they're not real bullets. Uh, again, take the magazine. It's going to go in just like that. We're going to take the mag catch release right here, slide it backwards, and it pops into place. So we are ready to go now. Again, charger is on either side. It's right here. Uh, and again, there's one on the other side right there. So we're going to grab it, pull it back. We've got one in loaded. We're going to take the safety off. And we're going to pull this trigger. I'm going to try to hold it close so you can see or hear. Hopefully you can hear when the uh, firing pin releases. It hits the snap cap so you can kind of see how long this trigger pull is. So here we go with the first pull. Uh, it's not too long. Um, probably a medium pull. Maybe a medium to short. I wouldn't say it's quite a medium. Um, probably about a, a quarter inch. Uh, there, I still have the trigger pulled in um, for the simple fact I want to recharge this. I'm going to pull this box over because the bullet is going to spit out at the bottom. So we're going to let it catch it here in the, in the, so it did shoot out there in the bottom. So we got another snap capped in. I still have the trigger pulled back in the firing position. I am going to slowly release it now to see where the reset uh, spot is on this trigger release to see basically for rapid firing see you know if it's a really long reset you're not going to be very good at rapid firing because it's going to take so long to let that trigger go out the reset before you can pull it back to get another uh shot off so let's see what it is here we go we're letting it out now oh pretty short pretty short uh so the let's go ahead and get another pull yep so actually, once the, the first initial pull happens on the trigger to get the shot off, um, it's about a medium, medium short uh, pull, but the reset is really short, allowing for your second, third, fourth shots and all that stuff, whatever you do, is going to be a lot shorter because you don't have that gap of that first pull. So overall, rapid firing is gonna be very easy on this gun. Um, the trigger pull has a little weight to it. We're going to see what that is right now. So let me go ahead and get this one back out. Again, I'm going to bring the box over because it is going to eject out the bottom. Uh, so let's go ahead and get it out. There she is. So we have another snap cap loaded in here. We've got one more to go in there because I do like to do two tests on this and get an average. Um, this trigger is a very large trigger. So... We're going to, I know in the previous videos, we said if we get it down to the very bottom of the, the, the scale, that it allows too much torque and it gives you a false reading. It shows you a lighter trigger pull than what you actually have on the scale. So, you know, I said in the previous videos that more, I like to get up pretty high on the trigger. It, I seem to get a better reading, but this is so long. Um, I'm not going to get too high because there's a pretty rounded spot. It makes it a little hard for the gauge to, to get accurate because it, it'll slide on you. So I'm, I'm going to be more towards the middle, maybe just a hair above it. So let me go ahead and reset this. All right, so we've already got it uh, chambered in there with a snap cap. So let's see what we got here. 
All right, so it looks like uh, that showed around six-ish. So let's go ahead and reset it. Let's get a second pull. We're gonna go slightly higher. Oh, see, that's where I was talking about it slides off. Well, it'll help if I re-chamber uh, it. So let me pull it back again, cause it's gonna pop off the bottom. All right, so we got our final snap cap in. Sorry about that, guys. Let's try this again. So that time we got a little about right at seven pounds. So the first one was six, uh, just a smidge over six. This one is uh, seven pounds. So probably about six and three quarters maybe uh, is the weight of the trigger pull. So, you know, again, myself, I like it lighter. You know, I've said that previously. I like around a three you know, a three pound trigger pull myself. It, that is a personal preference. Some guys I know that go down to two pounds. I mean, to me, you start getting very light there and you know, it's you gotta be very careful with a hair trigger. But uh, this trigger pull here to me is a little bit on the heavy side. Like I said, it's getting on up there closer to seven pounds, probably about six and three quarters somewhere in there. But overall, phenomenal gun. Let's go ahead and remove this magazine. I'm gonna set it to the side. So now, that's the last bullet there. So now the, let's see, I've got one over here. Let me grab it real quick. Let's see right here. So this is the lock that comes with them. And uh, basically what you would do is open it up. This is a cable system. Pulls out one side. Uh, you would actually take it, pull the charger open, and then you would drop the cable through. Comes out the bottom, and you would relock it. That would allow this firearm not to be able to be used. So that's the point of that. That's how you would use that on this. Um, again, uh, you know, I, I, I really like this firearm. Um, I have not personally shot one yet, so I am looking forward to it. Um, the rapid fire on this thing is going to be insane. The trigger pull is a little heavy, but that's okay. It's not, you know, un insanely, you know, where it's going to make you miserable. Uh, you can still have a fun day with this at the range. Very comfortable gun. It, it does feel really good. Um, holding this this firearm with the thumb hole stock on it very comfortable gun the uh, very easy to access quickness of the safety um, so you know overall this this is a great great firearm I really really I would probably give this a I'm gonna say a 9.2 I would probably give this firearm a 10 if the trigger was a little lighter but again that's not fair to say because that is a personal preference. Again, I hope this uh, helped you out on this firearm. Uh, inside the, uh, you know, at least the knowledge of it. Inside the box here, we do have the manual that will go over all the stuff we talked about in this video. So you'll be able to go back and see how to load it and that kind of stuff. Most importantly, in the very back is the warranty information. Uh, very important. It's the very last page of the manual. It got all your contact stuff. Hopefully you will not need that. I don't think you will with this FN. I have not heard very many issues with them. I have heard a little bit sometimes um, with it does sometimes it don't feed uh, and it seems to be the main problem with that is a cleaning issue. Sometimes the magazine there at the end where it rotates will get kind of nasty in there. Um, let's see what else is in here. Oh, let's, so also on here in this bag, these are sight tools. Okay. Like I said, in this Picatinny rail, there is a peephole on the rear end and there is a front sight. This sight can be adjusted. You can come in from the right hand side, uh, with this tool here. That's got the big round. It's kind of hard to see on the camera there because it's still in the plastic. I don't want to take it out because this is a brand new gun. Um, but from the side here, you would adjust for the windage uh, for your, your firearm here for the sights. And then the other tool 
um, that's right here, a little bit smaller. That's going to go in from the top, and that's going to be for your elevation. So this is an adjustable site for windage or elevation, which is it's it, that's that's awesome. I, this this is really 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 neat um, um, sight there through that Picatinny rail. I mean, it's the hole's so small, but you can really see very well through it. It's, it is amazing. I do like that. But anyways, hey, this is, again, the FNPS 95728. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to message me or make comments below. If you enjoyed this quick overview and the unboxing of this FN, uh, please show your appreciation by subscribing to our channel, uh, Brunswick Firearms Reviews. And again, thank you guys so much for watching. My name's Eric, and this is Brunswick Firearms Reviews.